Major funding for these programs is provided by grants from HSH Nordbank and First American Title Insurance Company of New York, Perfect Building Maintenance, Allied Partners, Bank of America, Murray Hill Properties, SJP Properties, Greenberg Traurig, LLP. Additional funding is provided by grants from Antares Investment Partners, Arbor Realty Trust, Athena Group, BRT Realty Trust, Burden LLP, C.B. Richard Ellis, City Habitats, City Investment Fund, Cushman and Wakefield, Eastern Consolidated, Essex Capital Partners, Helmsley Spear, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, Jackson Development Group, Meridian Capital Group, McSam Hotel Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Moynian Organization, Must Development, Palin Enterprises, Rosenthal and Rosenthal, Signature Bank, Sidney Fetner Associates, Stonehenge Partners, Studley, Sutfin Properties, The Wickhoff Organization, Extreme Construction and Deconstruction. Hello, my name is Michael Stoller, host of the Stoller Report, Real Estate Trends in the Tri-State Region. There is a credit crisis. There is turmoil in the credit markets. Whoever doesn't agree with me, I will stand to say they're a liar. But today I've brought together two investors and two lenders to really discuss what the climate is today with regard to values, buildings, and so on. My guests today include Larry Gluck, founder and chairman of Stellar Management, Gino Martucci, director of commercial real estate uh, for M&T Bank, uh, Michael Carter, senior vice president uh, for the Eastern Region Origination uh, for HSH Nord Bank, and last but not least, you know, like the guy from the Charlie Rose returnee over here, Steve Whitkoff, uh, who's been with me many times, uh, principal of the Whitkoff organization. So. What's happening, guys? What, what's really happening? You know, Larry, you said prior to the show that the Atria, Altria building at 120 Park Avenue just sold, went to contract today. Uh, a couple of months ago, this type of Class A property, definitely yes, Class A property, across the street from Grand Central Station on 42nd Street and Park Avenue, would probably would have traded and, it, and it's delivered vacant with the exception of the for the most part for the for the most part would have traded for at least eleven twelve hundred dollars a foot what happened today well as I understand it um, it traded or went hard for five hundred twenty five million dollars it's six hundred fifty thousand square feet um, eighty thousand or so that is below grade but Altria is taking a uh, taking back hundred sixty thousand square feet with their credit um, so you kinda have to cap that out and take it out of the uh, of the math, but it solves for about eight hundred and fifty dollars a foot. Um, it is a Class A building. It's got some some issues, especially with regard to window line. But for sure, in my opinion, if it traded, you know, to state the obvious, if it if it traded six months ago, it would have uh, flown out the door at a thousand dollars a foot or more. Now, uh, aren't you and Steve buying a building? Uh, Stephen and I. In, in Westbrook in, in a couple of weeks? Stephen and I are buying a building together, 405 Park Avenue at 54th and Park. We are paying slightly more than $1,000 a foot before capping out the retail. Uh, I, it's a superior location, obviously. Um, we bought it before the credit crisis, just before. I still think it's a very good value. I think that that part of the market is the most resilient part of the market, and I think that we can solve there for a net uh, for a net rent that easily justifies our price of uh, eleven. Call it eleven. But I think you know Gino's office is a block away, two blocks away, and, and Park Avenue, and you know 
fifty fourth is a, is a magnificent location. I mean, Thank you're you. you're a block away from City Group's uh, City Corp building, uh, Four Seasons, and all the rest. Right. A and p people, you know, hedge funds who might still be in business in a couple of months, the ones who are renting. W will probably prefer to be in a Park Avenue location as opposed to being Grand Central. I, I mean... We think so. Yes. Now, now, but, so, what, you know, the two of you are voracious purchasers in many cases. Uh, office buildings, multifamily, um, retail, without getting to London today. We're only tri-state, uh, Whitcoff. Uh, what, what do you see in the market? And then I want to hear what the lenders, who, the guys who give you the money, are seeing in the market. Well, Stephen, you want to go? <laughs> I'm going to let you take this one, Larry. <laughs> um, I, I, frankly, um, I, I think the velocity, from my perspective, velocity has dropped a bit. Um, I, the chatter in the market, and I think the 120 Park Avenue building um, exemplifies that, is that equity values are down 10 or 15 percent, which it makes obvious sense if, if you're restrained by the lack of liquidity and uh, in the market today. And, and from, for me personally, at Stellar Management, we're looking for our equity to work harder uh, um, when we're writing a big check than, than it did, you know, than, than we would solve for even six months ago. And we've made a lot of investments. We've made a lot of investments. It's not for for now, but in California and Washington D.C., where yields, where our money works a bit harder for us. But I, I, from my perspective, and Stephen, I, you could correct me if you think I'm wrong. That I haven't seen the kind of velocity uh, that we did before uh, before the summer. No, I agree. But I, I, I listen. Values may be down 10 percent, but I think the Altria is a great example of uh, of the market still holding up pretty good. I mean, Larry and I were talking about it in the, you know, we were having uh, some coffee before, and the foreign buyers are coming into this marketplace, and I think it'll be something that will be a springboard for the domestic buyers, too. Foreign buyers, Mer America, New York City's on sale in a major, major, major way. I mean, Michael, the, the purchaser of the, this property uh, is a longtime purchaser of uh, the bank because of their shipping and also in their real estate mm -hmm. business. Now, America is on sale. The euro, the pound. I mean, do you think a an American domestic investor would have bought this building? Well, I think so. In as much as uh, one could easily make the mathematical argument, the net achievable rent on that property is in the $80, 85 $90 foot range. I mean, that being said, someone's still got to write a check for uh, half a billion plus, you know, dollars, so it's a big... Wait a second. What about these guys? Don't you lend? You wouldn't lend the building? Come on, Gino. Well, we're still actively lending. We tend to be very sponsorship-driven. Let's mm -hmm. take this property. This is a property on 42nd Street, a magnificent building, may need some work, but it's still a... a 18-year-old, 20-year-old building, great location. No one could doubt that. Um, would you lend to um, somebody who you did business with? You may have not done business with the Ofer family. Well, M&T typically doesn't do $500 million deals. I mean, we're, we top out sort of in the two, $300 million range today, which so is... So let's say the building was only $300 million. How much would you lend? Because in, in six months ago or nine months ago when I did a show, I still remember people would say, and I think it was Steve who may have said it on the <coughs> show or other people, hey, you can lend, you can get up to 95%. That's not happening today. No, we want at least 30, 35 percent equity probably in that deal. And, and depending on, on the in-place cash flow and really where their cash flow was going, although it's partially empty. So, Michael? Certainly the, the 30 percent range is pretty typical now. The, uh, again, not knowing the details of sort of no, where, no, I, I'm where just the rents talking, are. But you know, uh, <clears throat> in, in general, because, you know. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the bigger issue that sort of drives our side of it is <clears throat> where's the syndication market? That's the the hard part. I mean, it's sort of easy for me to, for to my say viewers, I would hold on to a certain For my part. viewers, you know, this is not inside baseball. We, we mm -hmm. get to be sitting here. When you take a loan, in many cases, Gino keeps it on its books. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're saying is the the Wall Street firms basically used to take a loan and then they sell it. And if you if you were unlucky, you kept the piece at the end. You know, it was the, the it was like the ring around a rosy, all fall down. If you mm -hmm. weren't there. Boop, so you don't want to you want to keep x amount on your books 
Yes, we typically keep a, a portion. A portion of the know, books. Uh, and Gino, when you take a loan, do you, you, you take the whole loan? We can take the whole loan, but you know, something of the size we're talking about, we'd want to syndicate it down. And, right. and, and what he's alluding to, Michael's alluding to, is that it's hard to know who's out there really willing to buy your paper today. Even in the syndication market, mm -hmm. even among club deals, so, among so portfolio for, for, lenders, so, it's hard So to for know. these two guys who are buying properties, in, in the past, you know, I think um, I had a class last week at NYU, and Charlie Bender told the story mm -hmm. about two deals that he recently undertook. One deal, he sent it out to 60 people. One deal, they were, he had four people, and on one deal, he had one person. And it, six months ago, Stevie, mm -hmm. what would happen? You wouldn't have that situation. You'd have all these investment bankers and the Genos of the world and the H's edge jumping to do it, right? Yeah, I agree. But I think if 120 Park Avenue was an 80,000 square foot building trading at $70 million, then Larry would have bought that building five minutes ago and he'd be sitting here with a big smile on his face and he'd finance it with 65 percent leverage and write the check himself no different than I would and the reason he would do it is because he believes in New York and at 850 a foot it's still well below replacement cost the Ofer family could do it the fact is that the way Larry and I generally do, do would do a transaction like that and we're both gonna put in meaningful cash into a transaction but as those transactions get larger He's just as conservatively oriented as I, so he doesn't do 95% levered deals, nor do I. He's going to look for an equity partner who believes in his model, and there's not a lot of equity out there because... Wait, 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 wait a second. I would disagree. There is plenty of equity uh, from funds who want to put out the money. The whole question is they're, they're looking at different hurdles and different performances. I mean, I'd rather leave the, the Altria building, and I'd rather go into the discussion that I did in my class this morning. Uh, multifamily, which is where Larry and Steve started, has, is still in, still a product that you love to finance. Okay. Uh, there, there is no question. <clears throat> Six months ago, nine months ago, lenders were letting you buy a multifamily property, and as we say, it didn't meet coverage. It didn't. You, the, the rental would not pay sufficiently to meet the, pay, the payment price. That's yeah. changed today. What's happened to that? Oh, well, simply, uh, simply stated, you can't lend and reserve against future rents to meet your 1.0 or 1.2 coverage. You, ha you, you, you lend, you borrow against the existing coverage, so obvious, existing 1.0 coverage. So clearly, there's a higher cash component, a much higher cash component, and you know, also clearly, that pu should be pushing down prices. Now, on the small deals, as Stephen pointed out correctly, a small deal, there's so much liquidity in the market that a small deal, a 70, 80, 100,000 square foot deal, yeah, so many people can write that check who believe in New York and believe in buying on a price per pound basis that those assets trade. When you get to the half billion dollar level, not to get back to 120 Park Avenue, it's, it's just, it's a bigger check in absolute terms and it's just a, another level of investor. Let's look at yesterday, 440 um, Ninth Avenue, which is on 35th Street, and Ninth Avenue traded for about $150 million, $456 a square foot. Uh, a very unusual partnership of uh, Paramount and, and a local investor. Uh, a building that really didn't have that much upside un until B&H Photo and Dwayne Reed moves, where one of them goes out of business mm -hmm. to, to have the upside. But you know, it's in 30. You know, it's near the Hudson Yards, which I know you're bullish on. You had a property on 44th Street, which you sold. I sold it. I think the 440 was a great buy. I really do. 456 a foot. I mean, we'll all look back one day and we'll He's say, right. 456 a foot. You get a building for what it really costs to buy air for. Right. Steve's right. That's the price of the dirt over there, and you get a building thrown in for free. Right. And I guess if you're paramount in your Euro-based economy, it makes it even better. So I'm hearing two deals that I just brought up have been acquired by European-based operation. Now, what, what about, uh, I mean, what, what's, what's happening in the condo market? What's the, your opinion of the condo market? I mean, have you done recently condos? You're a rental guy most we, of the time. We, I am a rental guy. I did a condo conversion at uh, 27 West 72nd Street, the Old Cot Hotel, was a recent conversion. It's almost completed now. 
and we did very well there was a unique product and we did have a, a large percentage of foreign buyers it was a condo on the upper west side in a pre-war building which was an odd right near the park right near the park w yes. which is but now you you're involved and Gino may be mm -hmm. involved in perhaps one of the largest condo conversions also today the Manhattan house right. let's talk a little bit about the Manhattan house well what uh, what we like about it is <clears throat> you know the quality of the product the location, it's a type of product that is, is just not for, replicated For my audience, today. basically it's, it's a square block. Uh, it was the entire block, second to third, 65 to 66. Right. It's all, uh, you know, concrete construction, walls are all concrete, so it's sort of really almost pre-war style construction. And the uh, very, uh, you know, generous layouts. And it's, it's just a difficult thing to find. Everything, it's, it's very bright, it's very light and airy, and I think at the price point that we're at, it's um, you know, very comfortable in that uh, location. Yeah. And we're still seeing, you know, latest reports are still um, you know, seeing increases in the, uh, in the condo market, <laughs> in the pricing, quarter to quarter. But, you know, isn't that possibly, you know, it's like the office leasing market, when you get the office leasing results for the quarter, these leases, because both of you guys have been in the office buildings and mm -hmm. all of you have dealt things, these leases aren't done overnight. These right. have taken three, six months. So you don't really know if the sales are really there. And Manhattan is an anomaly. It's a different type of market. Mm -hmm. um, the Manhattan House, I think, is a great deal, but I believe there are conversions within the city that we do know, which I don't want to mention because I don't want to offend any of my former f guests or friends, are buildings that are eight-foot ceilings, which are being converted, uh, which do not have tax benefits, which are hurting today. I mean, you know, th there's something, you know, from my audience, a lot of condos, when you see the new condos, you didn't have that situation in the Alcott or in, in some of the other properties that Steve was going to do a deal, you know, for tax benefits, um, they say 421A. Uh, all the people read the air, they don't know what it means, but they hear 421A means an abatement. It's, it's a 10-year abatement. What effect do you see that going to have with regard to investors and as lenders? The, the fact that next June, if you don't have your foundation by June 30th, there's no, you don't have that little tax abatement, and you're, something has to give. The chatter in the market is that it's worth $100 a foot, and the new construction stuff going up on the east side, um, 2nd Avenue even, is, is, I'm told, selling at the $1,700, $1,800 a foot range. That, that is with 421A. What do you I, see as a lender? I think ultimately the market will ad adjust. I think perhaps land prices go down a little bit with, with, with residential site because of the lack of the 421A. Michael? I think it'll have some effect on it. But, I mean, there's, there's many properties to trade without it. You know, very high numbers. Exactly. You, you, you and the two of you started together as partners, and you, and I think Steve had a great story. You know, I said, why do you go up to Washington Heights? He says, we well, could never come down, you know, south of 96th Street. Um, let, let's leave Manhattan and let, let's get the, the investor and lender's perspective. There's so much potential. Uh, the the downtown Brooklyn partnership uh, announced. 14,300 apartments, 1.3 million square foot of office space, major retail, a million square feet of retail. What's your opinion of downtown Brooklyn as investors and as lenders? Steve? Larry? I'm sure it's great. It's, it's just not a market I'm, I'm, I'm personally why, why, familiar Why don't you like it? I mean, you, because you're, I like you're, Manhattan. You're an urban boy. You like Because I like Manhattan. I mean, it goes back to the 421A question. I actually think that the elimination of 421A is no different than it's it's a dynamic in the residential market like the liquidity crisis that's going to constrain supply no different than you're not going to see construction lending out there so office buildings are more valuable i think if you're an existing office building owner today no new construction that's the first loan that's the that's going to be the loan that's going to be the last to come back new office construction right. lending the interesting thing is that these will have almost sort of a, a mitigating effect in a sense that It'll, Absolutely. It'll dampen a little bit the new construction, so those things right. that are coming will. online will actually no get the benefit, and, an existing and, product and will get the happens, benefit. And that happens, history repeats itself every mm -hmm. time, and that happens every time. And, and Manhattan is the place that all the foreigners are coming to buy today. 
foreigners. You, you need saying to those Irish investors who who have been written up in all these articles, excluding mine, I did it also, are don't want to go to Long Island City or or Brooklyn? They don't just not want to go to Long Island City or Brooklyn. They don't want to go to Miami, Las Vegas, or L.A. because all those prices have come down, but Manhattan hasn't. So the fact is that Manhattan is now a repository but, for the more is an island. Investment. Let's talk about, you know, we, we have people from around the world who watch this. I really want your opinions uh, with regard to Brooklyn. Yeah, but me and Larry are, are Washington Heights and Northwest Bronx people, Michael. That's where we started. So we're happy to talk about those markets. Steve, okay. Right. But we are not Brooklyn. Oh, actually, we did own 522 Church together. We, we, we have together, and I guess separately, owned in Brooklyn from time to time. But I agree with Stephen's assessment that, you know, I'll take Manhattan. And uh, it's still true. And I would rather be in the so more would you, peripheral. So would your nine-year-old daughter, Heather? Heather, yes, Heather, thank you. Would she, she, you think if you took her to, uh, to, to Brooklyn, <laughs> uh, she, she, would, she would like it? I mean, there's a great museum, and there's a great park. Coney Island. It's Coney on the, Island. It's sort of on the way to Long Island, so she would understand it. But um, we, 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 are inve we invest a lot in Manhattan, not only in prime Manhattan, but I think you probably know in the more um, um, tertiary, I don't want to say tertiary areas, I guess, is the right word. We own Riverton houses at 135th and, and FDR Drive. We prefer those kind of bets in, in Manhattan proper, as I think Stephen does. Gino, you lend other places. I mean, uh, I mean he, he can't take the guys out of Manhattan. What's your opinion of Brooklyn? Well, what, we're, my, we're, what's Michael's position in Brooklyn? We're very sponsorship driven. So if we're in for the, with the right people at the right price per square foot, we'll do the deal. And uh, there continues to be a demand for the units out there. It does, whether that slows because of potential layoffs on Wall Street and people actually being able to afford Manhattan or, or just no demand, uh, I mean, remains to be seen. But there's still a demand. The right, we're, we're actually doing a deal in Long Island City. We're in for 350 bucks a foot. So, you know, recognize that's not Brooklyn. But. It's a comparative price point. I mean, I lived in Brooklyn for eight years myself, so I, I like it very much. And when I've seen how much. You know, the markets have re-extended, um, you know, beyond the, you know, Flatbush and Park Slope and Brooklyn Heights. It's uh, just a tremendous amount of improvement has gone out there all around BAM and those, those areas. I was out there uh, a couple of months ago, and it's just really improved, more restaurants, more street life. It, you know, it's safer as those areas get, uh, get uh, redone. And, you know, again, it's, it's that comparative price point for a younger person to get more you know, people coming from other parts of the of the United States to New York, because New York is still the the center. I mean, you know, so much so you much know, the, the cleaner, prior, the, the safer, et cetera, than when I first came. Michael, the prior week, uh, I, I, my show was on Newark. Uh, I think Steve. Didn't you own a building in Newark? You yes. Owned, you own Gateway. Mm -hmm. Did the two of you own it? No, Stephen owned that on his own. Stephen oh. owned that on his own. You know, my guest said, you know, nothing's really happening. It's still difficult in, New in Newark. What's your opinion of Newark? I mean, you got a new performing arts center. You have uh, 10 years old. You have a new hockey stadium. You have a new uh, baseball. You have uh, other things. Well, would you invest again in Newark? Would you ever go to Newark? Would you lend in Newark? Would you lend in Newark? I mean, I would go there, but uh, f for me, Michael, it's... I think all of New York has come back. So I agree. Larry and I started in Washington Heights in the Northwest Bronx, and I think Larry would tell you affirmatively, as, as would I, that if he drove through Washington Heights today or the Northwest Bronx, there is a, there's been a sea change up there, and it's fabulous. I mean, it's really, those are real places to live today. <laughs> so um, you're saying Newark is not a place to live? No, I didn't say Arthur that. Arthur Stern think, is incorrect in no, what his and thoughts I, are. And I think Newark is a, and I think Newark is a, is a great place, but, 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 Larry's talking about uh, investing in Washington, D.C. Or, or, or out on the coast, and those are large projects that he's invested in. I don't think he'd go out there to buy a 100-unit apartment building in California right. because time is valuable to him, and it's the same thing with me. You can take care best what you own in your own backyard, and these are all management-intensive deals, and, you know, there, there requires, it, it, it involves, it, there's a real diminution when you begin to take, you know, the supply lines get stretched thin. And I had some experiences where we made investments outside of New York and we just couldn't watch it as effectively as we could um, what's in our own backyard. And I think 
if you've been in business for quite some time, you get to that place. You right. just say, that's where I want to I want to be here because this is where I can run it the most efficiently. Exactly. The, the economy is a little difficult. The cost of oil is $96 a barrel. Uh, gasoline is expensive. What effect do you think this is going to have? Uh, because you guys also own some retail and you lend to retailers. What, uh, what, what feeling do you have on the retail market in New York? The retail market in New York, uh, from my experience, is very strong. New York City is uh, uh, f famously under retail served. Uh, as you may know, and I'm sure, Michael, as you know, we're doing a very large retail complex uh, on our Columbus Avenue site, including uh, Whole Foods and some other luminaries. Mm -hmm. And w the response has been uh, spectacular. I think that gas prices and the like will will have very little impact here in New in York. In New York which City, is, but they may have it in the <coughs> suburbs. I mean, this right. the 808 uh, Columbus Avenue is going to be great because that neighborhood has been lacking that, yes. that significant retail. And it's, exactly. it's like in Harlem, when they built the, <coughs> the mall on 125th, not the, you know, the shopping yes. center, there was a need. And that neighborhood needs this type of community. Um, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, we only have about a minute and a half, but I, I just like, you know, this discussion, and you, both of you, Coney Island, you brought it up. What's your thoughts? Is it going to be redeveloped? I, th I, think, I think it will ultimately, yes. As residential or? Probably a combination, <clears throat> I would assume. Okay. Um, it's hard, you know, when you have four good people and 30 minutes, but uh, I think we've got a pretty good idea from two investor and owners and two lenders of the state of the market. I'd like to thank Larry Gluck, regards to his nine-year-old daughter, Heather, uh, Gino Martucci, Michael Carter, and Steve Whitkoff. Next week, we go in discussion we've never done. We're talking about industrial buildings. See you next week. Major funding for these programs is provided by grants from HSH Nordbank and First American Title Insurance Company of New York, Perfect Building Maintenance, Allied Partners, Bank of America, Murray Hill Properties, SJP Properties, Greenberg Trorig LLP. Additional funding is provided by grants from Antares Investment Partners, Arbor Realty Trust, Athena Group, BRT Realty Trust, Verdon LLP, C.B. Richard Ellis, City Habitats, City Investment Fund, Cushman and Wakefield, Eastern Consolidated, Essex Capital Partners, Helmsley Spear, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, Jackson Development Group, Meridian Capital Group, McSam Hotel Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Moynian Organization, Must Development, Palin Enterprises, Rosenthal and Rosenthal, Signature Bank, Sydney Fetner Associates, Stonehenge Partners, Studley, Sutfin Properties, The Wickhoff Organization, Extreme Construction and Deconstruction.